All right. So good evening, everybody. My name is Antonio Lopez. I'm with Sound Ridge Music. This evening, we got with us Zambu. Zambu is an indie right. pop electronic producer and musician based out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Zambu combines ethereal, warm production with layers of soulful vocals and reflective lyricism that channels listeners to a nostalgic, thoughtful place. She draws inspiration from James Blake, Erica Badu, Tycho, Bonavir, and Sylvan Esso. Zambu has been featured on Spotify and Apple Music editorial playlists, including Today's Chill, Study Break, and Fresh Finds, with now over 350,000 listens. So, Zambu, thanks for joining us this evening. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how are you doing today? Tell me about your day. Um, I'm doing pretty good today. Um what happened today well colton and i who i get to play music with for zembu uh he plays guitar for zembu he's amazing shout out wish he could be here i have a little cough so we're taking extra careful precautions and not being indoors together but we did do a little outdoor show today with sound effects do you know sound effects antonio uh, i'm not familiar yeah, tell us more about sound um effects. So it's uh, an organization here in Fort Collins that brings music to assisted and senior living facilities. Um, and we did a performance for a memory care facility today out in Greeley virtually. Um, so that was really fun. We just posted up back in my backyard and it was really sweet. And um, folks at this facility were like in the what looked like the living space and um, we played some some classics, played like What a Wonderful World and um, Summertime and Georgia on My Mind, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. And then we had a little rehearsal after that out, outside. That's kind of the new norm, at least while I'm feeling a little under the weather. Um, yeah, we just play out front for all the neighbors to hear. And so that's pretty fun. And we, my partner Becca and I actually recently fostered a sweet, sweet mama pup. Um, her name's Thelma. And so oh. we've been spending lots of time with her and we, yeah, we love her so much. And so you have, you have her right now? Yeah, we have her right now. Becca's in our, our room with her. Oh yeah, what kind of dog is it? <laughs> uh, she's a pit bull. Pibble. I love pits. She's so like, sweet. Oh my goodness. She's just like the sweetest. Yeah, like my older sister, she's had pits before and they're the kind of dogs that like a lot of people are afraid of. Yeah. It's like such... they're so sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get to know them, they just look they're just really buff, so they're intimidating. But they're really sweet. Yeah, there's just <laughs> such terrible like stigma around pit bulls and and it's not the breed themselves. They're so, so sweet, like you're saying. So, yeah, we love tapping her around and are uh, dreading having to let her go whenever that happens. Is, is that like a predetermined date or is it just kind of when she comes up for adoption or? Yeah, just when some people like have put in some inquiries for her. So, um, so just whenever the right home is found and yeah. Cool. So, mm -hmm. so you were talking. My day been like. Nice. Yeah. So you were talking earlier about Colton, and mm -hmm. I had the honor of. Uh, it was actually the first show I saw. Like through COVID, it was like a socially distanced backyard show down at Archipelago in in Denver, yeah. and you and Colton were playing, and that was like a really amazing show. So. T Tell me a little bit more how <laughs> how like the two of you came together to play music as Zambu. Yeah. Well, thank you, first of all, so much for coming to that show. That meant a lot to have you there. And yeah, to play live it was felt like unworldly, you know. Um, <laughs> so uh, was so how Colton and I met. Right. Um, so I moved here with my partner Becca about a year ago. And right when I moved here, I connected with the music district and KRFC. 
um, the radio station at the music district and I joined the live at lunch audio tech team doing live sound for their live at lunch program where uh, bands come in and do in studio performances and then we do the live sound Um, and Colton was already on that team and so I just got to know him through that for a couple months and then we jammed together and I was really seeking and looking for like people to bring into Zembu and help bring it into a live setting and he was down and um was yeah he's just been the best to work with and he's such an amazing human and musician so yeah it's been it's been really fun so yeah we connected pretty much about a year ago now too and have just been playing and figuring out how to translate um my music into a live setting which has been a whole whole thing because if you've heard it there's you know there's a lot of elements to it and um so figuring out how two people play all of that um has been fun yeah like i was really impressed at that show just seeing you like control all the different things you were controlling with the keyboard and you're 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 using ableton when you're performing Mm -hmm. live is that right yeah yeah using ableton and using uh, ableton push which is essentially a midi controller um so that's cueing you know some electronic drums in the background maybe some background vocals too i'm allowed to i can do some looping live looping on there where i loop uh colton's guitars and then i loop some of my vocals um and then can play like yeah essentially oh, wow. like some backing tracks behind it and then um and then i'll play some live synth over it um so yeah it's definitely i'm really i'm really grateful for technology in this sense it's been music technology has been super empowering for me as an artist and i I really love it. I don't really like identify with being a, like a very good musician um, in terms of like knowing how to play instruments very well. Uh, but I really have taken to like the production side of things and and um, whatnot. So that has been it's just been really empowering for me and just um, yeah, I'm grateful for that access point, you know yeah yeah so you, so i didn't realize when you two were performing that you're like all of colton's guitars are like routed through your push yeah and, and mm-hmm. so like you're in control of like looping that he's doing and stuff yeah the songs that um the songs that like i'm using i don't know if this is getting too technical but um the songs that i'm cueing also like E drums, electronic drums on, and I'm looping vocals on. If it's just him looping guitar and it's yeah. just me singing live vocals, then he's controlling the looping. But anything yeah. where like our like tempos need to be in in sync together, mm-hmm. I'm looping. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're mm-hmm. kind of like got that master controls. Control yeah. Exactly. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, like I'm really impressed, like how you're able to. Uh, just keep all that together in your head you know <laughs> thanks because yeah. I, I feel like you know like there's kind of like just these different divides in a sense between different musicians you know and some musicians will see like electronic music is not being as real or something sure. totally. but it's like you know that's like totally like a crock of poop because <laughs> there's so much that you need to keep on top of and keep in control of and it's just like you know i feel like uh nowadays like you're able to use production and when you're performing live with ableton like you're using all those tools and all those sounds like it is an instrument in and of itself Mm -hmm. you know absolutely and it's just like i guess like you know like a guitar yes you could have effects pedals and yes, you could alter sounds in a certain way, but like what you're able to do with like modeling sounds with synths and in Ableton, it's just like you really have like a unlimited 
access to what you're able to to create sonically so i just i'm just kind of like in awe of that you know because i'm i'm coming from another end of the spectrum where i am very like singer songwriter based you know a lot of the songs are stemming out of a notebook and an acoustic guitar but i'm just really intrigued like talking with you about (laughs) ableton and i I like geeking, geeking out on all that stuff yeah yeah me too (laughs) and i like equally admire the other you know approach of like i guess i don't guess i wouldn't call it the more because like you're saying it is a musical approach to to use music technology for sure it takes a lot of, of of skills and knowledge in itself um but i'm equally admire the other approach and wish you know I'm working on that other approach because I think when you can have a good foundation of both approaches, that's just like when it gels so well, you know? Um, So I think that's, that's my thought on it. (laughs) Yeah, totally. It's like, you know, like there's no (coughs) like stigma about like how you're creating it or like the means that you're using to like access that sound and access that creation. Mm-hmm. because I, I just feel like you know there's like hey we, li- we live like in this time when there is so much ways to like get from point a to point b you know there's there's like all these all these routes that mm-hmm. to arrive at like a song right so like your your music you you've also like self-produced a lot of it right yeah yeah i have and more and more i'm producing more of what you have what's out as of now um have most have all been like co-productions for sure and um my friend from seattle my first two releases lavender taste and human Uh, my friend chance from seattle who we actually started uh, a little duo together like a few years ago and we released one song and it was really fun um and then that was that was that and then but he helped me um after that project produce these ones so he primarily produced uh lavender taste and um and human i did kind of a, a lot of the some of the arrangements and then i had um a uh, friend Joshua Hill who did, plays strings is, is out of LA um, he did strings on both Lavender Taste and and Human so definitely had a lot of co-collaborators on those ones and then like for my most recent and only EP Recall um, that had that I released in March, back in March, that had overgrown and tendency and still around on it. I um, like co-produced those with um, Ben Pisano of Corsicana, and he's amazing. Um, so shout out to Ben, and he did. He played guitar and drums for um, all the tracks, um, oh, overgrown really? and tendency, and um, still around and ten days. <laughs> yeah so recall came out like at the end of march right Mm-hmm. and so it was like literally like a few weeks into the pandemic yep and mm-hmm. like you know on a personal level like i feel like the recall ep was really uh soothing to me you know mm-hmm. it was kind of like a soundtrack to hope for me in the early days of the pandemic no and also like just a side note for anyone listening right now the way I met Zambu was uh, we were both part of this program up at the music district in Fort Collins called The Workout. And it was like a professional development program, you know, just helping musicians build their skills, whether it be uh, with musicality, booking, you know, production, just kind of all stuff like that. And I felt like me and Zambu were kind of felt like a kindred spirit and we were developing a friendship and then just like COVID came down and (laughs) so I'm really happy to be talking with you right now picking your brain a little more and you know one thing I'm amazed about is like you know kind of like the holy grail of sorts with music right now is like getting on to those editorial playlists Mm -hmm. for Spotify 
and you've managed to get on like three of them is that right um yeah i've yeah i've gotten on a few i don't know quite how many um yeah i've got it i think i've gotten on around like five or six well really so yeah. that's like that's like a really impressive feat you know Thank like you as so an indi much. independent musician you know because like by now you've probably got like hundreds of thousands of plays on spotify and upwards <coughs> of like thirty thousand monthly listeners yeah, yeah it's so cool i'm like how did this so yeah, how, so, so like, cool you, how did it happen like how know. did you make that happen <laughs> um <laughs> honestly i don't have like the best answer to this um question but i so human was the first song that got on uh fresh finds about a month after um yeah about a month after it released and then just through like the pitching um process of that and um and also had like a few friends share it you know i think there's a lot of power too in um i think always like pitching your song on the back end of spotify and stuff um but so many songs are pitched right but i think there's a really big benefit also i had a few friends who like have a big like a bigger following that were willing to share my music in their story and um i think i really don't know exactly what happened but i think like maybe like someone like they are kind of like an influencer sort of thing and so then someone on their page saw it who i don't know i think that yeah. could have maybe <laughs> helped i don't really know um i think it did um and i'm very grateful for those friends who supported the song and then um and and then yeah i guess the rest like that followed that um uh yeah i think that maybe just because i imagine there's like an it notifies like the on the spotify end of things if a song if an artist has already been on a playlist sort of thing and then maybe it it's easier to get on the playlist from there. Yeah. I'm really not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just really I'm really happy for you. And you like your music is super deserving of reaching a wider audience. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I it's like a oh go sorry. Oh no no. No, go ahead. Say what you're gonna say, sir. I was just gonna say, like, I'm so so grateful for that visibility that um those songs have gotten on playlists and um also i just want to name like it's like at the very same time like those things and the numbers like it's so hard to not like determine value based off of those in this very like how many followers do you have how many plays do you have world and yeah i feel like it does not like that those numbers do not equal how incredible someone's music is or how amazing of an artist they are um there's so many artists out there um so yeah i guess totally mm -hmm. totally yeah and uh so before we <coughs> went live on this facebook we were just chatting and you were saying your birthday happened really recently like september 18th oh yeah you were saying that uh blue like les paul guitar behind you oh yeah that was like a birthday gift right that was a birthday gift yes from yeah, my so beautiful family oh yeah Texas bust that family. out let's let's see how it sounds show people oh gosh yeah. it's embarrassing um um <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay nice segue nice segue <laughs> um yes i'm very grateful this is my first electric guitar so um just thanks family out there in the ethers uh for this is that the cue to is that the cue to play a song sure yeah sure <laughs> okay cool um all right um so yeah usually i'm playing with colton like i mentioned wish you were here colton um and yeah 
So hopefully you can catch us playing together. And we have a few different setups and stuff. Um, like Antonio saw our more full setup with the Ableton push and, and stuff. But we often play like just Colton on guitar. I rarely play the guitar myself. So this will be this will be fun. Um, yeah, so I guess this first song I will play um is called empathy and i actually wrote this song with my friend chance this was that one song we wrote um and so it's not it's not an official like zembu song but um i do play it a lot and incorporate it into the sets and it has a very special place in my heart so i hope you all enjoy it <coughs> History taught a story I refuse to believe Time again I am sorry Not today This won't be You said one thing You did another, another, another Listen only to your brother, oh, oh. Understand and play no part. Forgotten pain and birds for her. Ah, So I ask you what I asked before. So I ask you. What I asked before, so I ask you. What I asked before, so I ask you. Give a little empathy, yeah, show a little love, a little heart for me. Yeah, sure. 
Little love, a little heart for me. Give a little empathy. Show a little love, a little heart for me. Give a little empathy. Show a little love. Show a little love. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks. So this is my first time hearing you just play like just with guitar and just with <laughs> voice. Thanks. And honestly, before tonight, I, I don't even know if I knew that you played guitar. Yeah. So that was like an extra treat. Oh, And cool. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about like your vocal style. Oh, okay. Like I feel like you got like a really unique voice that just like the way you phrase and like the way that you like enunciate words. Mm. just like immediately like draws the listener in so just tell us a little bit like (laughs) how and when did you start singing um yeah so i started singing from the time that i can remember i grew up in a really musical family um my mom immigrated from japan um to the to los angeles when she was in her 20s and uh, met my dad at music school um in los angeles and my dad plays the harmonica and he's a wonderful musician and um I was going to swear, so that's why I was, like, a little awkward there, but I was like, no, maybe I should, no, no, should you, swear. It's all good. You go, go ahead if you want to. He's a badass musician. Yeah. My dad's a badass musician. There we go. Um, <laughs> and, okay, distracted myself there. Yeah, so they met at music school, so, like, you know, their relationship was built around music, um, and my sister played the piano, growing up and my brother played the drums and my thing was singing Um, my mom was a singer songwriter vocal teacher and so I just was singing a lot around the house and um so just grew up in an environment where I was really encouraged and my mom did vocal lessons from the house so you know would regularly wake up to you know I'd be in like my bunk bed and I heard someone you know doing vocal warm-ups and using the karaoke machine and stuff. And, you know, that was just, it was just like, so in it. So yeah, yeah, I, that's like kind of how I I grew up singing and I always loved singing. And, um, and then I didn't, I, I stopped singing for a while and, and found my way back to it, you know, really only a few years ago. Um, and yeah, I didn't really like work on, it's like a weird thing. I don't like really know exactly what the like process was of that, of like not singing for so many years and trying to craft it and developing it and then finding my way back to my voice. And it kind of was just, I guess, like this. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so that really makes a lot of sense here and you sing, just knowing that it's pretty much been with you your whole life and it's, even just infused in your being with both of your parents being musicians like it really c- comes through you know just with the way you're able to emote and just like no oh, you, you, you seem so really much. natural you know you, it's it's re- comes really natural to you thank you so much that's yeah. so kind yeah I really then appreciate uh, that <laughs> yeah and you know uh, in preparations for like preparing for this interview you know mm-hmm. like i I know that before you lived in Fort Collins, you used to live in Durango, mm-hmm. and you you sang with Jay Calvin down there. <coughs> and yep. I came across like a really cool like jam in the van session oh, that yeah. you guys were doing. Was that like at like Telluride Jazz Festival or Blues? Yeah, and, Blues and Blues yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was at Telluride Jazz Festival. Yeah, yeah, that was so much fun. That was that was a sick session. Yeah, that's like that's mm-hmm. like one. Uh, you know a little side note like that's one of my like goals like i would love to be on one of those jam in the band sessions oh it's so fun yeah, yeah. we were like so grateful that that was happening because we were playing tell your Eye jazz festival and then they were you know doing jam in the bands for 
There, I like pretty much. I think all the artists who were interested in it, um, they were just back in the back of that main stage. Have you been down to Telluride? And I've been to Telluride. I haven't area? been to the jazz festival yet, but I have you know, you know the that big stage? Yeah, and I forget what it's called, but yeah, they were just like behind there with their van, so you know, artists would book a slot, and so yeah, we were just super grateful for that that all worked out. Cause it was super fun and yeah, just really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so besides like uh, Jay Calvin and now doing <laughs> the Zambu work, mm -hmm. like are there like other projects that you've sung with through the years or like other collaborations or? Yeah. So I mentioned like my very first collaboration was with my friend Chance um, from college uh, Satori Blue and we put out Empathy together and that was kind of that first it was really the first um, that's when I like started to rediscover my voice and that was um, you know I didn't I really kind of didn't believe necessarily in myself I was kind of just taking a chance with it and trying to push myself out of my comfort zone at that time and and make that song with Chance and, and start a, a project together um, and it just totally opened up like everything for me and it just made me remember how much I love, love music and, and love singing and, and that I wanted to pursue it in some capacity. But at the time I had no idea what that would look like. I was working at a business consulting, um, firm in, in Seattle and, um, like reached out for music actually during that time. Um, and so, yeah, so Satori Blue, and then I moved to Durango, Colorado to be with my partner, Becca, and she was doing wilderness therapy there. And so, um, and then I connected with the Jay Calvin guys like right away and, um, that was awesome. And, you know, in that short span of time, you know, from like really not considering myself a musician or a performer in any way like we like right when I got there was starting to play shows with them and um yeah played a lot of shows over those two years that I lived in Durango with them and um Jesse the like band leader of J Calvin um we him and I started at this kind of the same time a duo project called Space Between Shadows um so yeah, that those were the projects that I was doing then, especially over those two years I was living in Durango. And then when I transitioned up here to Fort Collins is when I have pretty much solely focused on Zembu and, and that's that's just what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And plan to be doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so uh with like the production side of things with the artist, you like when did you get into that? Um, yeah, I, so I've been kind of dabbling in it, um, uh, you know, production, I don't know if you can resonate with this, but it's, I mean, learning an instrument too is like super intimidating. Um, and it's just like so much to learn, but I've been dabbling with production for about three years now, but I would say I really started to dive into it really like this past year and a half, I would say, you know, I've wanted to, I kind of like didn't want to do it almost. And I, I didn't want to really get into it because it felt so intimidating originally. And then I realized, you know, how empowering it was, you know, to, um, to, especially as a woman and, um, wanting to be producing my own music and have that autonomy and have collaborations be an option rather than a necessity, you know. Um, I, I love, love collaborating. And I also really believe in like, you know, now fast forward, like I really believe in um, empowering myself through production. So yeah, I would, in, in short, I would say like really diving in this past like year and a half where I'm like, I wanna learn as much as I can rather I would say like the first year and a half it was more of like what can, what can I learn that like I need to learn in order to like kind of do this and collaborate with other people and work my way around these these DAWs and stuff yeah yeah so uh 
you know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like you should share another song. What, what, <laughs> do, you, what do you want to play with us? Sure. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play Human. You? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. This is the yeah. first song of yours that I ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Cool. On the interwebs. Yeah. Okay. And and for everyone listening, I'm gonna uh, drop Zambu's Spotify link here in the comments. Nice. You should really check out her studio work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see here. Yes, this song is very near and dear to my heart as well. Um, yeah, the song is about my mom and yeah, um, she died when I was a, a teenager and this song is about my grieving process um, through that. Here's a message on a receiver. A message at all. I was rewriting the story when you took the fall. Um, familiar questions, begging them to be their same. I was so ready to take the blame and knowing on the ride home and knowing without being told and knowing to be washed away and knowing from your mother's soul I am your maid after all Faces help of all words can be spoken. Room sinks in while battling this notion. Time holds and I swear it's my fault. And how do you tell? Say goodnight, no more simplicity comes in a haunting form. How did this? How did this? How did this ever become the norm? being told and no one to be washed away and no one from your mother's soul I am humane after all
Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> really powerful yes. song. Thank and really you. just a testament to how great a writer you are, you know, like oh. hearing it stripped down like this, just with you and the guitar, then to like the album that's up on, or the the version that's up on Spotify with all the strings and all the production, you know, just any uh, treatment of the song, like it really just comes through, mm. really connects. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> that means a lot. It really does. You're welcome. <laughs> and I, and I want to say, like, you know, our time together is kind of coming towards a close. But, like, is there anything more that you want to talk about? Anything more? Um, I guess we're going to talk about Beats by Girls. Let's tell me more about Beats Let's by tell Girls. Tell about that. Yeah, yeah, this 45 minutes has flown by, I must say. You're a great interviewer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Beats by Girls. So I'm starting a chapter up here in Northern Colorado, which Beats by Girls brings music, technology, education, and mentorship to women, girls, trans, non-binary, and gender expansive folks. Um, yeah, there, um, are not, not many, uh, there's two, two percent of all producers are, are women and that doesn't account for trans and non-binary and gender expansive folks. So yeah, there's just like a lot of gender inequity and racial inequity within the production world. And, you know, my path has kind of like led me to really feeling deeply and passionate um, and just, yeah, really uh, want to, anyways, but yes, I'm very deeply passionate about bringing like gender and racial equity to um, the production and music technology world. And um, yeah, I was given the opportunity to start a Beats by Girls chapter up here. So um, yeah, for uh, 2021, we'll be launching a virtual program up wow. here and for specifically girls and gender expansive youth um, in high school for the first, um, programming in a virtual setting. So yeah, it's just a shout out for that. If uh, anyone is interested, please, please feel free to contact, uh, me at, through Zembu or, um, Beats by Girls Foco, um, the Instagram and yeah. So, so that's, that's really, that sounds like a really cool organization. <laughs> Oh, they're amazing. And yeah. So is it, it's like, uh, got other chapters around in different places. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, all over the world, actually, really? there's chap like a chapter in, um, Spain and Portugal and South Africa. So yeah, there's, and all over the U S wow. so, yeah, it's really yeah. amazing network of humans. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that exists. And um, it's the kind of thing that, you know, like if Soundbridge could be of aid in any way as you're starting this new Beats Bar Girls chapter up in Fort Collins, like by all means, let us know and we'll, we'd love to partner in some way. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, Seriously, yeah. Let's, let's collaborate. Yeah, totally, yeah. Lift <laughs> each other up. And, uh, you know, I also wanted <coughs> to talk about you. You had mentioned earlier this week just when we were texting back and forth you were saying that you're going to be releasing some singles through like the coming months so can yeah. you kind of give us a little tease on what those are all about uh yeah, yeah yeah um yeah i have a few songs that i've been working on and i'm just planning to release them as singles throughout you know the next six months or so every few months um you know i'm trying to not put like pressure on myself to make an ep or you know um right now and i my production process overall is like pretty very slow so um i it's nice to kind of yeah i'm just trying to not put that pressure on myself to like produce a ton of songs and um so that's kind of where that's really rooted in to just like enjoy the creation process and and stuff but um hopefully we'll be i'm planning to release one in like january or so so yeah, yeah. 
Well, we'll be uh, looking forward to that and wishing you the best of luck. <coughs> uh, anyone listening, make sure you follow Zambu on Facebook, Spotify, all the places. She's got some really amazing music. And uh, yeah, Sarah, thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. Yeah, thank and you so much for having me. can hardly wait to when we're uh, someday down the road when we're able to actually hang out in person again. I know. Yeah. Seriously, I can't <laughs> wait for that. And yeah, thank you so much for putting this together and creating community and supporting local artists. And yeah, you're amazing. And your music is amazing. So shout out. <laughs> and everyone go check out Antonio Lopez Musics um, as well. So yeah, Thank don't you. don't you have something coming up? Yeah, yeah. So I uh, just released a new <laughs> single about a week ago called Going to the City. And going to be releasing two more singles next month leading up to uh, the Roots and Wings album release gonna be dropping that on new year's day kind of hoping that it could be a soundtrack to a new year you know i don't think things are gonna magically be better come new year's day 2021 but i think there's something to the human spirit and just like those mental reboots of like changing the seasons a new year and hopefully my music could play a small part in in that for people yeah totally <laughs> no yes ah, so good i cannot wait oh, it's gonna be a soundtrack to my year and i already know it oh yeah <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> all right hey. great well thank you so much have a great one see hey, ya you as well Catch bye you bye bye